What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Marvel Roundup. A lot of stuff going on with Fantastic Four. A little tidbit regarding t- Fantastic Four, I, wish, I should say. Uh, X-Men, Ghost Rider updates. I really want to talk about Ghost Rider, Brian, because I think it's an important thing. Brian, for them to get right in terms of the genre they would have this film in. Galactus, all this stuff, Brian, what's going on? All right, so Fantastic Four, we got two pieces of info. One kind of humorous, actually, from our Galactus, Ralph Innocent, who's going to be, I guess, voicing in motion capturing Galactus. Uh, not, not a Marvel fan <laughs> before getting this role, I think it would be safe to say. But he did offer this um, in an interview talking about playing Galactus. Quote, it's great. I'm not someone who knows the whole lore of Marvel, but my son is an expert. He's 25, so he's been schooling me for the last couple of months. He's been teaching me all that. Because, yeah, I got the part, I read the script, and was like, that's cool as F. And now the more I've understood about the universe and the way it all fits together, yeah, that's really cool as F, end quote. Galactus is cool. Galactus, cool as F. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Galactus is cool. Very interesting character. So, again, the hope with that character, Brian, is that they don't disnify him and he's just not this big dude just walking around. Perhaps he may not speak for the first few moments. I'm not looking for that. If he speaks, it's for a reason. Because mm-hmm. he needs, he feels the desire that he needs to, to speak. But in terms of his approach towards... The, the inhabitants of uh, of whatever planet that he's in, the comparison has always been the way humans are to ants. It just doesn't, you know what I'm saying? That to me will be an interesting twist and occurrence in that film, right? Quick question. How big does he need to be? Did, like from the effects perspective, like does he need to be Arishem sized no. for the part to work? No, I, I agree with you, but I'm curious as to how big they make him. Like a uh, like a kaiju from um, Pacific Rim. Pacific or Rim. Like that. Yeah. Okay. I, that's I'm with what I, you. That's what I would expect. Okay. Yeah. Because obviously I the would comic, expect he's his literally planet sized, but yeah, that's... I would I would expect his his uh, ship to be massive. True. Right? That's fair. what that's that's what I expect to see. Um, like Independence Day, but <laughs> on a grander level. You know what I'm saying? It has yeah. to be massive. Yeah, that's fair what enough. I want to see. There is a spectacularity to this, Brian. That that's expected, and that's what I need to feel when I see this. I need to be in awe. Yeah, that's true. His first appearance probably has to be almost like the start of its own movie like usually like a great movie you get like with a creature feature or something or like jaws or something like you get something spectacular that grabs you about this entity so whatever he first does in this movie is probably critical to how you perceive him you made, a, you, you made an interesting uh, uh, um, observation about that brian the beginning of that film should be the destruction of a planet so that we know what to expect if he, you know, so that we can, oh, snap, he better not get to Earth because that can't happen to Earth, right? We have so- to see. We have to see it. Because did we see it in another? It wasn't really, again, whatever happened in the other films, that was just whatever. I don't even remember it because it was just horrible. Oh, the cloud? No, nah, that's, that's irrelevant. They never, it never actually did anything. No, you're probably right though. So then it would be more the maybe more the Jaws playbook. You don't actually see him, but you see the you see the destruction. You see the impact he has. Maybe you even hear him, but I don't think you necessarily need to see him in that first scene um, for it to have impact. But it ties to our other news bit, Paolo, which is that there's a report that this film which is supposed to be kind of a space-based period piece, right? It's supposed to be set in the 1960s and then a lot of it's in space. There's a report now that multiple other villains will appear almost in cameo form in the opening parts of this film before we get to Galactus and Surfer as the main opposition to the Fantastic Four of the film. If true, what do you think about the idea of 
what sounds to me like they want to establish the heroism of the Fantastic Four by having them defeat others from their villain catalog before they go and deal with this. Right, I think is something that usually is done in a lot of films to sort of see what their capabilities are, how they work together. They just can't throw it on screen last minute, right? So we have to sort of see that 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 I guess dynamic, that ingenuity, that cleverness that they use to 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 solve some of these issues with other whatever it may be. We have to sort of see and get comfortable, I think, with their abilities and their the dynamic between them, right? So that would also imply that the chronology of this film will be a little mixed up, right? Because if they're leading with that, that means they're already the first family, they already have their powers, and they already know how to work together, which yes. means any origin or any trace of origin that we see is going to be flashback after that. So that's yes. the tact. That's what that, if this rumor is true, that's what that's saying. Yeah. So I don't know how you feel about that as a sequencing or as like a device for launching us into Marvel's version of this. Again, they're celebrities, so we would expect to see what that celebrity looks like, right? And 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 they're the first family, right? So they're gonna. The hope is that they. I don't necessarily want to see an origin film for. for I don't either. Right? Yeah. So I, I I so I like the choice of they've already established. We've never been. Imp I've never been impressed. No. Nope. And I think they need to establish that from jump. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, the, all, of the three movies, the only time where they start as a Fantastic Four is Rise of the Silver Surfer, which is not a great film. But in the first one, you're building up to them using their powers. In the ill-fated Miles Teller one, you're building up to them <clears> using <throat> their powers. So this will be, you know, in some way, I don't know if it's a good comparison or not, but almost, there's almost like a whiff of Brian Singer's X-Men, you know, where they kind of introduce, right? The first time you see Scott and you see Storm, they're in the snow and they're already X-Men, right? And they yeah. save Wolverine and Rogue from Sabretooth, right? And then they, and you kind of backfill and the movie tries to backfill the start of the school after that. So, I mean, not that that was a great like scene, but just like the technique of doing it in that order. So anyway, what I, what I hope though, is I hope that the roster of villains they use for that is pretty low level. I would not, I'd be very upset to see somebody of note get dispatched in five Ooh. minutes in this movie and then yeah, feel like yeah. I can't really we can't really use them in a fuller capacity later so X-Men Brian okay we got one news bit here and it, it, it it's it's kind of a curious one I gotta be honest I wanted to put it in here so Michael Leslie who we talked about has been uh, reportedly he's in the writer's chair for the first iteration of this Marvel X-Men live action film but re reports are that his pitch to the studio was he wants to have the exact same character cast for the movie as was used in X-Men 97. No changes, exactly the same. So right down to Sunspot, every character you saw in X-Men 97 would be the live action cast in the movie. What do you think about that? In terms of the, but in terms of the actual people that voice him as well no, no. but just okay, the okay, roster okay, okay. so okay, like remember the there roster, were okay. remember there was a rumor that there was no wolverine right there was at yeah. one point that, so there would be like no everyone you saw would have a live action counterpart but there would be no one else added and there'd be no one taken away brian this is just confirms what we already had thought in terms of or what we were thinking about how they are going to approach this because trying to compete with x-men 97 is a in terms of who these characters are, Brian, and what they do and how they do or whatever, was well, going to be a tough task because huh. why people love the X-Men 97 and those characters in their dynamic. So this this just confirms that conversation was has been had or is, it always is being had to see where, because they... X-Men 97 is, I'm sorry, it's, it's fantastic, yo. How can you do anything not on par with that or beyond it? I would assume you, in terms of live action, Brian, if you're trying to do this, Brian, it's a risky sort of situation, Brian, because visually we already love the action. Crazy, isn't it? So what are you trying to do that'll... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
No, it's tricky because it's like if you like not that they're doing this, but if they had announced we're literally just making X Men ninety seven into live action, like literally beat for beat, I think our response would be okay. We have asked for something like that in other, like in the DC universe, we've suggested this as an idea. With this particular property, that might be risky because visually it, it looks is. so good. Yeah. Can you actually top it in live action? Can you actually have the cast pull off the moments with as much emotion as the animated version did? Like. I just thought it was a little surprising that he didn't make a single change. So you're almost inviting more comparison. And it almost goes back to, there were rumors that Kevin was going to make the X-Men 97 show canon. And when I heard this story, I was like, well, is that why? Because he was kind of saying, well, it was he debating whether to literally tell people it is the same character, like the live yeah. action and the animation, it is the same character as opposed to two riffs on the, on the same character. So I don't know. But I, when I heard it, I was like, I think you are going to be turning people toward the direct comparison. And I'm not sure you really want to do that, mm -hmm. given how good X-Men 97 is. There, Listen, there is a way to make live action X-Men without it having to be compared to it. You can certainly, if you want to live in that world, have it be something. So, it, you, I don't think you should even be, I don't think it should be the same thing, Brian. No, I mean, well, obviously, look, they're going to change the time period, I would think, right? Because th this show was in the 90s. I would assume the movie is present day. Um, yeah. So that should help you, in theory, a little bit separate your identity. I just but, don't want to be reminded of X-97. I want it to be but that. But that's what that's I'm saying. I think having the roster be identical will cause people to kind of look in that direction. Whereas if you made just a few changes, um, I think you might have kind of stamped yourself a little more uh in the individual fashion so anyway i i thought it was an interesting bold but maybe risky choice if that's true yeah but it, it is risky that's what it, that's what it is it's just risky because i don't really want to compare this because we're gonna listen it is going to happen anyway yeah in terms of how good it is not necessarily does this character remind you know what I'm saying? Not that character sort of thing, but just that that the the goodness of it, the, yeah, the, the quality. Of but uh is it yeah, it's a risky, risky, risky um decision to go that route if they do so. But we're gonna be watching. I bet Miller, go ahead. Cause you know who's doing that experiment is um DC with Blue Beetle. We didn't really make this its own show, but this they announced they're doing a Blue Beetle animated series, but the voices of the characters in the animated series will uh, reportedly be the voices, of the including actors. Zola Maraduena, who did the live action movie. And the report is that if the animated show hits in a way the movie didn't, they might then retranslate it back to live action. So there's an example where they're literally telling you, these are the same people. Yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. animated versus live action, and this, they're this, interchangeable. This, they're, they're playing, they're, they're Palpatine. They're, 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 they're playing the long game. They're playing the long game, and I get it. If, because if that animation works in terms of popularity, they can make another movie, and it'll be hopefully behind the hope is that box office is much better. And the, the yeah, so we'll see. All right, uh, Ghost Rider. Uh, why don't you why don't you take over here because the, the guy who's been lobbying like crazy to get this part is reportedly maybe going to get this part finally Brian, but talk about the lobbying aspect because i wasn't too aware of it i haven't i had heard of it but the way shout out to tracy uh he had said to me that he's been trying to get this role for a minute so what that what has that lobbying looked like? Well, it's because he's always been rumored to play Nova, Richard Ryder, and we're wow. talking about Ryan Gosling. So he's been asked about Richard Ryder um, and that idea in the past at like press junkets. And his response has always been, well, no, because I want to play Johnny Blaze. Like, that's the character. He said that publicly as far back as 2022. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay that okay. that's the character he wants them to call okay. him about. All right. But now he's... But think about it. For Ryan Gosling, a lot changed between 2022 and 2024. Like, think about what's happened for him, right? Barbie. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. The Fall Guy, which wasn't a box office success, 
But, but his movie. approval rating in that movie is like 100%. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying, like, from Marvel's perspective, in the star hunting category, having Ryan Gosling be your Ghost Rider now versus even three years ago, it is a bigger deal. Like, that is truth. Like, you know, so maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's what maybe is going to get him the part. But he has always said it's his favorite character. That's the one he wants. All you gotta look. All you gotta go is go look at ba- uh, not Baby Driver, uh, Drive. And yeah. You sort of see what a Ghost Rider played by him would look like. Yeah, I even think there's bits of Blade Runner twenty forty nine where, like, if you kind of you know this. Still... I never saw that movie, but oh, you should see it. That's worth it. That's okay. worth a watch. Um, okay. But just he he's a very subtle actor. He's like a minimalist actor. Um, some way, and I think for Ghost Rider, that's useful at times. Like, you yeah. know, like depending on how they do the effects or do the character, like it isn't a character who needs to be like Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark. Like, it's just not mm. the style that I I envision mm. in in that character. And Gosling does is very good at like using just facial expression or like he was fantastic. You remember movement. the Titans? Yeah, that's why he's I never bad. Him from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's great. So it would be interesting how how fast this production takes place for this for this movie you know it would be interesting and if they're wanting to do this midnight suns thing there's other characters that are you know what i'm saying well that's part of the key i think to this whole enterprise right we know the troubles blade is having but if they're trying to get to midnight suns they need one of the characters they want to lead that to get off the ground successfully Brian, I'm thinking before we move on to what sort of uh, ghost ride I think we should have, I think they're really struggling with so, what sort of story for Blade to put on screen to lead into these other things that they're trying to do. I think that's the biggest issue. But the sort of movie Ghost Rider should be a sort of, and similar to Blade and, and this Midnight Suns, it should be their horror genre sort of thing brian because ghost rider that cannot be disneyfied it cannot no. be you know what i'm saying ghost rider has to be horror it has to be because it's not like it's you're not gonna take your kids to this this is sort of some you, you gotta have jump scare you gotta be this has to be horror yeah because this you're talking about a guy who has a skull and is on fire we can't I mean, you know, nobody could be talking to dude like regular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so, we already saw the we already saw the 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 watered down version of this in the Cage movies, right? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. You know, we can't see that again. We can't see that again. Yeah. I agree with you. I mean, look, one of the most successful things Marvel has done, and we don't talk about it very much anymore, was that Werewolf by Night special. That was horror, and people liked it. Yeah. It, it was not TV youth seven right it was tvma like it's fine yeah, like people yeah, were cool yeah, with that yeah yeah so i'm with you like why not just lean into th- look that would have been your vehicle right there wherever by night to, to put in blade they, so they, remember they, that, they, was they, re- that was a rumor that was a rumor yes that was yes. rumor that they talked about that and maybe in retrospect they may wish they did that yeah yeah um, but i think you're right with horror like look horror is one of those genres that actually does well at the box office so it is interesting to me they never tried it um, now, typically horror works because it's very low budget, but the reality is people like to be scared. People like to go to the movies to be scared. For that, for that moment, yes. Yeah. Scott Derrickson, that was his original idea too. for Doctor Strange 2. That's what he wanted to be a horror film. But they, 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 they went another way. Yeah. Well, they kind of did and they didn't, right? Because like, Elizabeth Olsen yeah. is kind of in a horror movie in the back half of that. She kind of Certainly. is Michael Myers, right? But it's it it feels yeah. very awkward with what else they have in there, and so the movie doesn't really work. I don't think it's justified. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I agree with you. If they want to go, like they should go hard R horror, like with you know, yeah, man. Yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of the Fantastic Four updates, uh, the X Men sort of idea of trying to not necessarily do 
um, exactly what's been being done in X Men, but ca- taking the characters, the roster of the X Men uh, characters for live action. Um, and what do you think about Ghost Rider being a real, true horror? I wouldn't imagine there would be many people out there that would disagree, Brian. If you do, let me know. Do you want to see another one of Ghost Rider Nicholas Cage joints? And I would also say, to your point, just in closing, if you want to make... When, when you're put, trying to put other teams on the board in an interconnected universe, you have to make it believable that Midnight Suns would be its own thing. Yeah. And if you make it too bright and you make it too kid friendly, you're just going to be asked people are just going to be like, "Well, where are the Avengers at? Like where where are these other where are these where are that Fantastic Four at?" But if you make it gothic, if you make it horrible, if you make it that <clears throat> dark to where you're like, "Okay, the only characters who could deal with this are the ones who live in that." Yeah. Yeah, you already got listen. You already got Tony Stark suffering from PTSD from all the stuff that he done. You think he's gonna have to? You think he wants to deal with this? <laughs> no way. Life model decoy. That's what he would say. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.